What is up scrub fam? Pat here back with part four of our set seven limited review. This is most likely to get you prepared for your set seven pre-release which will be this weekend at the end of July 2019. Today we'll be going over the yellow cards if you missed the first three parts which is red, blue, and green. I will link them down in the description below for you. Um, if you do enjoy this type of content though and you want me to continue doing this for other events, please let, you know, leave a comment down below, like this video, it really helps us out a lot and it lets me know that you guys want to see more of this kind of stuff in the future. I know it's kind of, as the name implies, limited, not everybody plays limited or draft, but uh, I'm generally curious to hear your thoughts. So. Before we get into the actual cards, let us once again review the grading scale that I use here. I create cards on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the absolute best. It's an unstoppable card. I think Kami's Power Piccolo from set 4. 9 is a bomb card, but still uh, you know, almost unbeatable. I think Piercing SS2 Gohan. 8 is a good SR or rare or top tier on common. It's nearly always playable in every scenario. 7 is a middle SR or rare or a good common or uncommon. Good common or uncommon, yes. Above average card. 6 is a low SR or rare, or a mid uncommon or common. It's a card that you will most likely will always put in your deck. 5 is playable. This is the baseline. We usually want to shoot for 6 and above, but 5 or above is pretty much what you're, you're looking for. Uh, 4 is a filler card that you most likely won't use. 3 is a card you're basically only using for energy fixing. 2 is an awful card that is a niche sideboard. And 1 is unplayable in virtually every scenario. And now that I am done being tongue-tied and we've got that out of the way, let us jump right into the actual cards. So, there are two leaders in yellow of the set. There is Hit, and then there is Kefla. So, as for Hit, I appreciate the fact that he is a self-awakening leader. You don't have to have it, a blue or yellow universe 6 card. You can literally just take the life and fail on the effect. So, he does awaken pretty quickly, which is pretty nice. But, as far as dropping actual one-drops from your hand with him your only real targets are basically Kaba and Khalifa you could drop Kale but Kale has really terrible use on turn one so for the most part he only really works front side first ability with two specific cards um, and you're not always going to have them in your opening hand so it's kind of like a hit or miss scenario as far as his backside um, you know his second ability here it only works if you have uh, what's his name? The super rare, and that's not something we can't really ever bank on uh, in limited. So that also kind of knocks him quite a bit. But he does get off the line fast, and you could do a lot worse than him. Being able to play a card, by the way, that's two or less, also is a pretty solid ability, but not a great one because most of the two drops in Universe Six are ten Ks. Uh, and you are minus twoing from hand to play that. You know, use that effect. So unless you're using this to basically you know, close out a game and you have a huge hand advantage on your op uh, opponent, it's not really going to end up being the best. Um, I feel like you could do a lot better than Hit. He is slightly uh, better than the average, like, playable leader, but not by too much. That's why I'm going to give him a 6. He's pretty much middle of the pack, I feel like. If you get off to a really aggressive start and you have a lot of cards that synergize with his abilities, he can get better. But in the average case, he's just kind of very middle of the road. So next up we have Khalifa and Kale, aka Kefla on the backside. So Kefla is really good as a leader. Um, I would not put her in the same status that I put Goku and Gohan in from previous videos, but I would say she's probably the third best leader you could be on. Her activate main ability, uh, when you have three or more energy, you get to play a blue Kale and a yellow Khalifa for free. So you get two battle cards for free on board. And some of those are actually pretty good, and they set up some pretty devastating plays with uh, the common Kale as well as the, the super rares. But getting two extra attackers on board for free is pretty nice. Uh, and then, you know, where she kind of goes over the top is the backside. So the backside, not only does that give your Universe 6 cards an additional 5k, when most of these cards are 2 drop 10ks or like 4 drop 10ks, that actually lets them hit for relevant damage. And the leader itself also gets 5k. So 
anybody who's played in a format where 20k leaders are a thing in limited knows how strong they are because they basically demand two cards per swing to block so keflin usually when she swings nets anywhere between two and three cards out of your opponent's hand just based on the raw pump ability of the uh, the leader and that's really really strong it's just not as insane as gohan's alpha strike or the infinite negates that goku provides you in the format and for that reason i'm gonna give kefla an eight at this point we've covered all of the leaders in the set and it's pretty apparent that if your goal is to win you really should be on gohan goku or kefla all right next up is super saiyan blue vegeta i've said it you know in the red videos and previous videos on my own channel but yeah two drop 20k is outstanding it's way above rate it's super powerful it's relevant at all you know points in the game dropping two or three of these guys in the game is pretty much a recipe for a for sure win so for that reason we're going to give Vegeta an 8 Next up is this rare Saiyan Bloodline Vegeta. He has a 2-drop 15k, which is a good rate. That's where we want to be for our 2-drops most of the time. Um, and that usually will get me somewhere around a 6 or a 7 in terms of rating. But I think Vegeta is a little bit better than that because he is actually going to draw me a card most of the time when he swings. If you're at a critical mass of blue or yellow Saiyans, he is really good. Uh, I would say he's a 7 in most cases just because he is a 15k for 2 with upside. If you have somewhere around 15 or 16 targets though, like a critical mass of Saiyans in your deck, that he jumps up higher to an 8. So I would say he's somewhere around about 7.5 in the average case. Really, really good rare. Not going to you know win you a ton of games like Vegeta the Cruel or some of these other bomb rares in the set like Raditz, but he is really solid. And I would, you know, be thrilled to open him and put him in my deck because he will definitely put in quite a lot of work. Next up, we have Champa the Trickster. So this is basically the yellow counterplay battle card. Three for 15 is just an okay rate, as we've discussed, and it has the potential to cost one less. So a two drop 15k has me a little bit more enthusiastic, and I'd be willing to leave it open for that ability. Um, this card is basically Crusher Ball, <clears throat> and then you get to... Uh, you get to draw a card, so that is pretty solid in itself. So I can overlook the just the okay rate for three for fifteen because no matter what, uh, I am potentially getting a pseudo removal effect and a draw one. Uh, and for that reason, I'm going to give Champa a seven. I think that some of the other counterplay cards are a little bit better than him, but he is a pretty solid rare all around, and you know is pretty flexible uh, at all points in the game, both playing it on your turn and your opponent's turn. <clears throat> So this is the stance, boys. Hit Pride of Universe 6. This is, uh, this card is honestly, like, if you are on Universe 6 leader, uh, and you open this guy, and consider that his target is the hit that we'll talk about next, which is at a common level. So it's pretty feasible if you open this guy and have a pretty solid yellow pool that you can actually pull off his ability to flip your opponent to the backside, the evolve effect. And that is pretty backbreaking. Um, on turn four, if you drop this guy with the evolve and flip them over, it should almost for sure be a game win. Putting your opponent to 10k when he has a 20k dual attack is like an obscene amount of pressure. Uh, and you know, if you have any kind of board, like if you go, you know, two drop hit, uh, and then like three drop, you put like say like a 20k uh, or something, and then maybe I don't know, like a 15k that you were able to trick into play for one or you know whatever have you perhaps say turn four you evolve this guy you have a 20k in play and then you have your leader swing plus potential overwhelm and their leader stuck at 10k and they can't awaken even on their next turn that's pretty backbreaking that is you know somewhere in the realm of three to five attacks um and there it's very very difficult to defend against that uh on top of that even if you don't have <clears throat> you're not on the leader and you don't have the evolved targets, 5 cost 20k for a dual attack is still pretty solid. It's not like insane, but like that's good enough to get a card roughly around like a 6 or a 7 and limited by itself. But then when you factor in, like I said, the, the evolve effect, and then also the fact that he can basically re pseudo remove a card permanently until a better threat presents itself means that he is going to always at least, you know, put your opponent behind on tempo. So he just does a lot for a super rare. Um, 
like I said, if you get the evolve trigger, I just don't see how you don't win on the spot. And even if you just don't have the evolve trigger, he still creates a moderate amount of pressure while getting rid of your opponent's biggest threat on board and giving you some breathing room. And for that reason, I'm going to give Hit a 9. He is really, really good. Alright, so next up is Hit after Image Master. Um, not like super in love with this card. Uh, it's a 2 drop 9k, so it's not even at the playable rate where it's 2 drop 10k is the minimum where we want to go. That said, you can do a lot worse than paying 2, you know, for warping a card in your opponent's hand and then just having a 0 5k combo body that you can, you know, combo away after that. And then there's also the upside if you open the super rare, then he's obviously just ridiculous. Um, so I'm going to give hit basically a 6. This card really can't attack and you really don't want to attack and the activate main seems kind of awkward because you're basically only really proccing it to make this card dodge any removal until you can finally, you know, get the super rare. That's pretty much all this card's effect exists to do since you only get the warp from playing from hand. If you got it from warp then this card would be degenerate and would be an easy 10. Alright, from the previous video, you guys remember me saying that Yad Jirobi in Union Force was arguably the best card at on the uncommon and lower level in Union Force. Well, Kaba is the same card, color shifted. So this card gets the easiest 8 ever. 2 cost for a blocker will save your behind. 2 cost for a blocker that selectively gets to remove the best card your opponent attacks with is really good. You should stock up on this guy. Uh, as many as you can get in draft, and then you know if you open two or three of these in sealed, consider yourself in a really good place. Next up is Kaba Brimming with Spirit. We've covered can trips quite a lot in these series. One cost for a 5k can trip is pretty much the standard. It gets a six. It helps us filter out our draws. We need some kind of consistency. Um, and you can't really get beaters on turn one in this format outside of just like 10Ks that don't scale well into the late game. So this card is always a relevant one cost play because it lets us dig for our one of super rares or one of rares, one of combat tricks, things like that. So that's why we are always, you know, happy to play these, but they're not exactly the most exciting. Next up we have Khalifla, uh, Awakened Sister. She is not as good as Kale. But 4 cost 20k double strike is very good at closing out a game, even on turn 4 if you can't cheat her into play. If you could present this card as early as turn 2 with its uh, combo into play ability to get a 20k double strike on 2, that is very powerful and very good at closing out the ability, or uh, closing out the game, pardon, <laughs> pardon me. But yeah, so on top of that you get to switch uh, a battle card and an energy to rest mode. Uh, there's not that many negates uh, in this format, but people will be playing one cost 10Ks just to have some combo power. So being able to tap your opponent's last energy and deny them when you're going for a shotgun for game or to deny the potential rare negate that they did open is pretty nice. Most of the time, I feel you'll be tapping down a blocker with the effect on this card, which again is just, you know, further cements why this card is pretty good. It is not, I feel like, as game ending as Kale because turn 2 20k crit with a removal staple to it is not, is, you know, I feel like just strictly better than being a 20k double strike in this format that only can tap uh, a blocker. So for that reason, I'm going to give Khalifa an 8. She's almost as good as Kale, but like I said, critical really just pushes over the top along with the removal. This is definitely one of the better super rares you could be opening along with Kale though in this format, make no mistake. Alright, so next up we have Khalifla, the Resilient Sister, and like the cards in the Zamasu deck, this is one of those cards that is going to get a dual rating. This card, uh, you know, it's, it's a free 10k and that's not exactly the most exciting thing. It's very akin to... Uh, the Krillin, like we talked about last time in the video, it's basically a 10k that you put 5 on and your opponent has to spend a card to block it. And, you know, a 10k for free isn't exactly exciting. It's not really any different than paying 1 for a 10k vanilla. Um, and it doesn't have, like, blocker or any fancy keywords or effects. They make it, like, super relevant. So for that reason, I would give this Khalifa a 5. However, if you are in Kefla, it's one of the best reasons to be playing Kefla because when you get to play a 15k for free, suddenly it's a whole different ball game. Um, yeah, it just gets to go for free to the face 
uh, after your leader swings it gives it 5k every single turn and if they want to kill it on their your turn that's great it's you know one less attack that's going at your face and you didn't really invest anything in it outside of a single card from your hand so in that case if you are in the Kefla deck then this Khalifa is an 8 just because it's free it's just free pressure you could just drop a ton of these and just keep going to the face every single turn alright so next up we have Khalifa the bold sister so as we've discussed in previous videos uh, drawing a random card at least in my opinion is better than a top searcher because the top searcher can whiff and sometimes you just you know don't have a critical mass uh, to make it honestly worth it that said Khalifa does have some things going for her one uh, she searches top five instead of the standard top three two the set is literally overloaded with targets with her, which means she most likely is going to hit. And three, she is named Khalifa, which means that some of the other cards in the set, namely the super rare, can evolve into her and have some good function. Also, again, you have like hit leader and stuff, which can get, you know, free value out of this card. So for that reason, I'm going to give this Khalifa a six. It's a little bit better than the standard searcher. Uh, I still think it's slightly worse than some of the cards that just draw me a card straight up. But it's still a solid one drop that you should be including in your decks. Next we have Ironclad Defense Frost, and this is a really solid 4-drop all around. 4-drop uh, with Blocker is pretty good. He's also a 110k combo, so that satisfies our ability to actually have some defense or you know some extra oomph when we're going for the shotgun for a game. And then his ability to untap a Frost and evolve into him means that we can play him really early and really aggressively. He's just really good at all stages of the game. And he does a lot of roles really well. He's good at pressuring early. He's good at defending our life. He's good at shotgunning for game. Uh, and then, you know, he can help us in the aggro, uh, the aggro game as well. So for that reason, I'm going to give Frost a 7. Not exceptional at anything, but I would be super pumped to have two or three of these guys in my deck because he's just so well-rounded. <clears throat> Alright, next up is Frost, the path to full power. So... This is basically Yellow's TN, Elder, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, those I gave a 4 because they're, you know, just barely, I feel like, below the playable rate. 2 drop 10k is okay, but nothing exciting. And then, you know, the, the main reason to want to play it is the ability to combo to kind of stack your deck on a reshuffle, which is, I guess, okay. Um, but, like, not anything like game breaking, and it's super niche and narrow. Um, that said, where Frost is a little bit better is that he can evolve into the 7 drop, which means I would actually be more inclined to want to play this guy, which is why I'm going to definitely give him the solid 5. He might be close to a 6 just because you could pressure with this guy and then evolve into the, the bigger Frost as soon as you attack with him, uh, and then you know just get another attack for 20k. So it's pretty good value overall. So you know, just... Like I said, just some, he's a little bit better than those cards, and I'm more inclined to want to, to deck them, but you know, he's still not anything exciting. All right, Botamo. Super combo. Magetta. Super combo. <laughs> yeah, for those of you guys who are listening audio only, that's an 8. Super combos always get an 8. Next up is Namekian partner Salnel. Uh, when you play him, you get to search for a Perina. And then the Perina, for two costs, when you play it, you get to search the Salnel. So they're basically the same card. Uh, I feel like you could do a lot worse than just cycling through your deck to find mediocre yellow energy. Because two cost 10k is like an okay rate. But at least it replaces itself. And that, you know, by itself gets it at least a 5 for both of these cards just because they find each other. If you have a ton of these, like I wouldn't be thrilled to you know jam them, but they're still pretty solid just because they're energy fixers. You just play a card for two, maybe it gets one damage out of your opponent while they're unawakened, and it gets you a, you know another yellow energy for next turn to charge, or it replaces itself as a 5k. This card's a little bit more exciting if you're Kefla because then you know it's at least a you know a six because there's at least a two drop 15k that replaces itself. I could say you know honestly it could go as high as a seven if you were in Kefla. Um, just 5 is the floor, 7 would be the ceiling, and you know, it would only basically hit the ceiling for either of these guys if you're actually in Kefla, and have a pretty uh, you know, healthy stash of both of these cards, because if you whiff on it, uh, or you just don't have the other target, these cards are basically duds and not really worth the deck space. 
Oh boy. Zamasu. Inviting Despair. So this card... Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to come right out and say it. I'm going to give it a 9. I don't, I don't think I've ever given an Uncommon a 9. I usually don't ever give it an Uncommon a 9. But, um... Four cost 15k, not a great rate. That said, you can't remove him from the board outside of one very specific super rare. Uh, and then, I guess, like, no, that's it. I think it's just that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's one specific super rare gets this guy off the board. And then, when he comes to play, he locks down two Saiyans slash Earthling slash Gods, which that is basically everything in the format that is not, like, what, Frost, Piccolo hit so yeah he basically removes two battle cards from play for playing him he is a relevant sized beater and your opponent literally can't do anything about him for the entire game if you have a, a critical mass of these and you know like you're like say yellow green and just have a ton of cybermen blockers and you could just draw out the game Zamasa will win you the game in the long run like he's one of those ones where you want to play for turn six in limited um and then obviously if you're in the leader and you have a bunch of like the ramp cards he's just he's even better there um if you have a ton of these i can't see your pool having more than two copies but like you know playing zamasu leader just to grab this guy is a legitimate strategy if you open like two of these and say your pre-release foils also this like there's a there's a case to be made to be playing this guy. This guy is like honestly absurd. I would argue he's the best card in the set that is you know him. It's between him and Vados for like best card in the set that is at the common slash uncommon level. Um, but that said, like even this Samasu is a hard counter to Vados because she's a god. It just taps her down forever. So like this card answers the most problematic common in the set while being a relevant threat. So it should just it shouldn't be understated just how insane this guy is. Um, opening two of him with a sizable yellow pool should pretty much mandate you should try to go yellow if you can. And now for the reverse of things, hidden ambitions Amasu. This card is abysmal. <laughs> two cost four K is literally an unplayable rate. It's indestructible, but I don't care because it doesn't have blocker or any relevant attacking stats where I care if it dies. And when you play it, you get to play a Goku Black that costs two or less, of which there's only one in the format, and he costs the same, so why wouldn't I just play Goku Black for two? Um, the only real reason to jam this card is to, if you're on the leader, that will, you know, it's just another name Zamasu for you to search, and you opened uh, Divine Providence, which I believe is the Super Rare's name. So if you open the super rare, sure. Like, and you have the leader, sure. But I see almost no reason to deck this guy. Uh, easy three. He's just yellow energy. <laughs> Moving on to uh, you know another Zamasu. This one is actually quite good though. Two cost 5k blocker. Blocker, this is the only, besides Cyberman, this is the only way to defend your life at the common level. And for that reason, I would give it an 8 just straight up because, you know, defending your life is super de duper important. Uh, this card's even better, obviously, in Goku Black uh, and Samasu Leader because it's free there. So, yeah, if you already have, uh, you know, if you're in blue yellow, it might be worth playing one or two Goku Blacks just to be able to get this blocker for free, even if you're not on that leader. But yeah, this is one of the only ways, unless you open the rare in yellow, if you don't open Cybermen, like, this is pretty much your way to stop damage in yellow. It's your floodgate. It's really important to be playing these on, like, turn four and such to prevent your opponent from killing you. A normal game will be, like, one drop, two drop, two drop, and then turn, uh, turn four will be, like, say, either uh, another two drop with Zamasu or maybe, like, two one drops in a Zamasu or something like that and just try and close out the game off the back of your beaters that are already in play so moving on weak spot protection you guys have played constructed right so you guys already know how good unbreakable Sun Goku is and how good infernal villainy cell is well this is if you're on Kefla or hit uh, it's basically the same card and it's honestly one of the best reasons to be playing those leaders so for that reason I would give it an 8 it is a you know 10k combo that does replace itself 
and as we already have discussed multiple times 10k combos are at a premium there's not too many of them in the set uh, and this is you know one at the common level that replaces itself to boot so I would definitely be slotting these guys in to your deck as many as you have if you are playing a yellow leader and now for the flip side of the coin straight up we will just come out and say it now zero mortals plan is an easy easy one um, you'd have to play a two drop Zamasu either the bad one or the free blocker and then pay three and then pitch this card from your hand and then play another Zamasu from your hand so you have to pay three cards from your hand the original Zamasu the one you want to evolve into and this card plus a minimum of three energy most likely five energy to get a four drop I'll just play the four drop thank you for the one card and four mana Kefla's Fury okay so this card is easily the worst of the counterplay options because it doesn't impact the board in any way and it costs you two to plus one uh, games are really condensed and limited because it's a really aggressive format where players have little if any defensive options so I don't think you can spare the energy to draw a card that said you know if you're already ahead or it's at parity and you're not in any real danger so you actually open a pretty solid pool and you have some blockers and defenses I could see the argument being made to actually play it it is a playable card which is why I will give Kefla's Fury a five uh, I would say no more than one of these uh, I feel like going any more is asking to be punished <laughs> And then finally, double negate. <laughs> Restrained. It's double negate. This rare cycle, they're all eights because you get two defenses. Uh, I spread it across two turns for one cost each, and that is exceptional. So there you go, guys. That wraps it up for the yellow cards. Next time we will be talking about the black cards as well as the multicolored cards. Uh, we will tack on, for those of you guys who are wondering, about the infinite rares, the infinite dragon rares or whatever they're called, the infinite sand rares, I don't know what they're called this time around. I will tack those on to the black video since it will be much shorter than just talking about the multicolored video. Again, if you guys enjoyed this, consider giving a like or leaving me a comment. If you guys want me to do more of these for Set 8 or any of the other products that Bandai may put out, say half sets and whatnot, would really love to know. Uh, again, hopefully this is helpful to you guys on your pre-release. Patreon members for 3XG, look out for that cheat sheet coming Friday. You guys can print it up, bring it with you guys to the tournament. It'll be awesome. All right. Until next one. Uh, until next time, guys. Have a good one. Bye 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 bye.